IAQ, indoor air quality, the danger within. Hi, I'm Mark Warner, Director of Training with Enviro Solutions. Did you know that the average person consumes two pounds of food, four pounds of liquid, and over 30 pounds of air in a single day? And did you know that in civilized and developed countries, we spend over 90% of our time indoors? That means our exposure to pollutants outdoors is negligible compared to our potential exposure to pollutants indoors. And you've probably seen the books. In fact, there's been many books written about this topic of indoor air quality, pointing out the dangers that currently exist within our indoor air. You may recognize some of these books. Many have been on the bestseller list. Additionally, there's been some very sophisticated white papers written by professors and people that have doctorates in areas of science regarding indoor air quality. Lastly, you may have seen articles like this appearing in magazines and trade journals and all over the internet. Well, let's define indoor air quality, IAQ. IAQ is defined as the environmental characteristics inside buildings that may affect human health, comfort, or work performance. And this was brought to us by the Indoor Air Quality Scientific Findings Resource Bank, the IAQ SFRB. Some primary factors that influence IAQ include indoor air temperature and humidity, the ventilation rate, and the concentrations of pollutants, including volatile organic compounds or VOCs that are emitted from products used indoors, as well as various types of outdoor pollutants that enter the building with the outdoor air. And let's take a look at the indoor air quality or IAQ statistics. 30% of the buildings worldwide suffer from IAQ problems. That's from the World Health Organization, WHO. The lost productivity due to IAQ problems is 18% per year. That's from the Building Owners and Managers Association, BOMA. And $60 billion of lost productivity and hundreds of billions of dollars when associated health care costs are included. And that's right from the US EPA. Poor IAQ can cause eye, nose, or throat irritations, skin irritations, fatigue, headaches, nausea, sinus problems, coughing or wheezing, even trouble concentrating. Other illnesses, including cancers, infections, and other serious health effects can also occur. Poor indoor air quality can have lots of impacts. It can cause increased absenteeism, lower morale, and decreased worker productivity. Some of the airborne contaminants that we worry about are radon gas, paint odors, mold, construction dust and asbestos, smokestack emissions, allergens, and irritants such as perfumes. Some common sources of contaminants are building materials, furnishings, equipment. Of course, pest control products are a concern as well. Pets, molds and bacteria colonies, and of course, cleaning products. It's been said that the number one impact on indoor air quality is the off-gassing and aerosolized material used in cleaning products used on a daily basis. Traditional cleaning products have contained all sorts of hazardous and toxic ingredients over the years. And all these materials end up in the air we breathe. Specifically as it relates to cleaning products, there's an important note. Changing to green cleaning products is the simplest change you can make to improve your indoor air quality. Mold, mildew, and moisture. Mold is a prominent IAQ problem. Mold grows and reproduces in the presence of moisture from leaks or elsewhere. Moisture control is a primary mechanism for reducing mold growth. Air conditioners set too low can actually create cold spots that can reach the dew point causing moisture. And who's at risk? When it comes to breathing in harmful chemicals, the people doing the daily cleaning face the greatest risk of exposure on a daily basis. And here's a chart that assesses the risk, which risks are of greatest concern. It identifies the less serious versus the more serious. 
as well as some of the impact they can have on the human body. One of the things we do is look at indoor air quality as a three-step process. First, begin with capturing and controlling the source of poor air. Entrusway matting will reduce the harmful plastic byproducts, the heavy metals, pesticides, and fertilizers, and other synthetic chemicals that are tracked in from outdoors. Second, improve the ventilation. Keep HVAC systems maintained and replace the filters regularly. Third, clean the air in the building. Vacuums that utilize HEPA filters capture 99.9% .9 of the dust, pollen, and other particulates. And of course, green cleaning products minimize fumes or VOCs from entering the indoor air. Yes, a three-step process is the right way to approach it. Cleaning the air after it's already dirty is the least effective method. It's better to attack the source of the problem first. And we need to take a look at the entire indoor environment. The carpeting should meet environmental standards with reductions in VOC and hazardous material content and increases in recycled and bio-based content. Virtually all building materials have the potential to impact indoor air, including paints, glues, adhesives, wood preservatives, and so on. So there's a lot to managing the indoor air quality. We need to do certain things very critically. We need to ventilate occupied areas at a minimum rate of 15 cubic feet of air per minute. We need to maintain indoor carbon dioxide levels between 800 and 1,000 parts per million. And we need to maintain indoor relative humidity below 70% and the temperature between 68 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, when we're managing indoor air quality, we need to assure both fresh air supply and exhaust ventilation and keep idling vehicles away from the ventilation inlets. Other things we can do to manage the indoor air quality is to eliminate standing water and wet materials within 72 hours of wetting. Double bag water damaged materials and throw them out. Change filters and clean drip pans often. We also need to replace volatile and VOC laden chemicals with non-volatile zero VOC products. Replace toxic and noxious chemicals with non-toxic chemicals and dispose of used cleaning solutions immediately. Measuring your progress is important. Track where you started out and how you were proceeding. Use of an indoor particulate counting device is helpful. Now let's look at the cleaning connection. We interviewed a few people regarding their opinions regarding green cleaning. Green cleaning is a fundamental component of a green building. And all the benefits of having a green building disappear the first time non-green products are used. And you know, they're right. The VOC level of a traditional floor finish stripper typically is about 15 to 30 percent. Where a green certified floor finish stripper may have a VOC content of 6 percent or less. The volatile organic compounds of concern include 2-butoxyethanol, which is being investigated as a possible carcinogen, and ethylene glycol methyl ether, among others, which have been associated with eye, skin, and ear infections, and may even cause birth defects. So we know thorough cleaning can reduce dirt and dust particles as well as VOCs. Thorough cleaning has a direct and dramatic impact on health and productivity. Dr. Leonard Krylov has been quoted as saying, Thorough cleaning has been shown to reduce total illnesses by 24%, doctor visits by 34%, and absentee days by 46%. Stephen Ashkin has been quoted as saying, Housekeeping plays an essential and critical role in maintaining a healthy indoor environment. So let's look at other ways to improve indoor air quality. That's going to include improved operation of the HVAC systems, using green cleaning equipment, using green cleaning procedures, and of course, using green cleaning chemicals. Of course, we've already discussed how HVAC systems play a critical role in controlling indoor air quality. Let's take a look at other equipment. 
There's lots of great green cleaning equipment out there. Microfiber tools are a great green choice for hard surfaces. Vacuum cleaners have a huge impact to indoor air. The efficiency of the vacuum cleaner's filter will greatly impact indoor air quality, making it either better or worse. Poor filters will recirculate dust, textile fibers, pollen, chemical residues, bacteria, fungi, viruses, even dead skin cells back into the air. HEPA filters are highly efficient, capturing 99.9% .9 or more, making indoor air cleaner rather than contaminated. And then we can look at using green cleaning chemicals. Always use products that have a flash point above 150 degrees Fahrenheit and products that have a total VOC of less than 7% after dilution. Much of this information can be found on the product's label or its material safety data sheet. And question the use of any product that doesn't provide full ingredient disclosure information. And then of course we need to be using green cleaning procedures. Use cold water since warm water can cause vapors or fumes to rise and enter the indoor air environment. Proper training is essential. When it comes to green cleaning, use the five R's for your cleaning chemical selection. Reevaluate. Is the procedure necessary? Reduce. Can the quantity, toxicity, or packaging material be reduced? Reuse. Are the products durable, repairable, reusable, or returnable? Recycle. Can the product or packaging be recycled? Renew. Are the products derived from renewable resources? These are the questions that you need to ask. Studies have shown a 4 to 16% increase in performance when indoor air pollutant sources were removed. Large paybacks can be expected from making changes. Some studies show that the financial benefits exceed the cost by 10 times, which is a great return on investment. Now, in order to show these financial benefits, you need to know how far you've moved forward, and determining what baseline to use as a basis of comparison is critical. The EPA conducted the base study to collect extensive indoor air quality data from public and commercial office buildings. Prior to this study, there was very little baseline IAQ information about typical buildings. This data is commonly used as the baseline of comparison today. The EPA and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, have developed a guide that provides practical suggestions on preventing, identifying, and resolving indoor air quality problems in public or commercial buildings. It includes factors affecting IAQ as well as investigative and assessment strategies, and it includes a 100-item checklist. Released in 1995, IAQ Tools for Schools is a nationwide initiative to help school officials assess, resolve, and prevent IAQ problems. It includes an IAQ Tools for Schools kit with a CD, chart, and checklists. Another program released is the Healthy Seat Program. It's a computer program that includes all of the assessment standards, 400 regulatory and voluntary standards. It also offers a starter program that contains the top 90 assessment standards. It's a very good way to get started. And last, but certainly not least, we need to talk about the building service providers. The building service providers need to be aware of the entire building envelope, as well as the goals and desires of the client. The building service provider's role has become more and more vital in keeping the indoor environment safe and environmentally healthy. Thank you for watching this program today. You know, indoor air quality is a critical issue and we all have to do everything we can to take care of the air inside the buildings that we occupy. This program was brought to you by Enviro Solutions, the maker of proven green cleaning products. And they brought it to you because it's all about human health and safety especially our own. Thanks for watching.